Namaskar. Hello and welcome once again to Straight Bat, my weekly video blog, where as the title suggests, I comment with a straight bat. And today, the big story, the elections of 2023, the winter polls, where, as you've seen, it's been a saffron surge across the Hindi heartland and only a consolation prize for the Congress in Telangana. Let me tell you an interesting story. Sometime in August, I met a senior Congress leader. I said, Sir, this winter is going to be in four rajyos, five rajyos, what is going to happen? He said, Rajdi Bhai, be sure, two states though we have already won, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh, there is a wave there for the Congress. We are in the fight in Telangana and Rajasthan may be come back. Karenge. This is in August. Four months later, as the results have come out, what happens? The Congress has lost Madhya Pradesh. The Congress has lost Chhattisgarh. The Congress has won in Telangana, Southern Comfort. And the Congress has lost in Rajasthan. So, what changed between August and December? Four or five things as to why the Congress lost and the BJP won in three crucial Hindi heartland states. Number one, overconfidence. The overconfidence that the Congress had, ki wo to Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh jiti gaya hai, we have won, meant that the party forgot that when you fight an election like a 50 over match, you can't at the end of 40 overs because you are doing well believe you won an election. Bhupesh Baghel seemed to believe that because in 2018 the Congress had won 68 seats, even if they came down, they would come down by a few seats only. Instead, he was going around, in fact, saying, Apki bar pachattar par, 75 plus. Similarly, in Madhya Pradesh, if you spoke to Kamal Nath, he seemed to believe the election was a done deal. Then all that the Congress needed was to make sure that they came on voting day and uh, the voters would ensure a big victory for the Congress. Fatigue, thakavat, we were told, was there. Again, Shivrat Singh Chauhan, anti-incumbency would sweep the BJP out. Overconfidence in any aspect of life is dangerous. And the Congress has paid a huge price for it in both Madhya Pradesh and in Chhattisgarh. By contrast, do you know what the BJP did? Let me tell you the inside story. Amit Shah called a meeting in late August of this year. Now, this was an Amit Shah who had already lost out in Karnataka in May. But Amit Shah ji believes, ek election har gaye, Agla kisi bhi tarah se jeetna hai. He focused on Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. Madhya Pradesh in particular. Several senior BJP leaders in different states were rung up, including ministers, state ministers. They were given specific districts and told for the next 12 weeks, you will not move out of these districts. You will focus on them, do micromanagement. Mr. Shah also got his tracker poll working. Also did extensive surveys to find out who was the best candidate for a particular seat. And guess what? In seats that were seen as difficult in Madhya Pradesh, he decides that union ministers and MPs from the center will go in. The likes of a Narendra Singh Tomar, for example, in Madhya Pradesh were told, no, you're, go you're a union minister, but you're going to fight a state election. Thereby, the BJP created a sense of impetus within their party that yes we are in the fight the numbers were showing that the bjp was trailing in september but mr shah decided micromanagement is the way forward let's get our machine going and remember in a state like madhya pradesh the rss machine is very strong and robust in chhattisgarh do you know what he did he decided that this is a state where others matter smaller parties Parties like the uh, Amit Jogi's JJC, the uh, uh, party of the Janta Chhattisgarh Congress, or indeed uh, the uh, Amar party of the Adivasi group, or the BSP, the Bahujan Samaj party, or the GGP, the Gondwana Gantrata party. These smaller parties were slowly but surely being sponsored by, guess who? And what happened as a result? These smaller parties began to divide the Congress vote on election day. 
some of the votes that would have gone to the Congress began to go to others in states like Chhattisgarh. That was the micromanagement, the election management that was going on. Then there was the woman vote. The BJP has realized under Mr. Modi's rule, women matter. Therefore, the Ladli Behna scheme for uh, uh, women in Madhya Pradesh. Or importantly, uh, the Matari Devi Vandana scheme in Chhattisgarh. 12,000 rupees per year to be provided. The Congress was forced to react, especially in Chhattisgarh. In Madhya Pradesh, Kamal Nath had already announced 1500 rupees for uh, uh, women from BPL families. But Shivrat Singh Chauhan was actually giving the money 1250 into the uh, wallets of women. That, to my mind, became a crucial factor, the woman factor. Also targeting consciously the tribal vote in both these states. So there was micromanagement that was going on. By contrast, in Rajasthan, the BJP decided we're not going to make this a fight between any local leader versus Ashok Gelot. Ashok Gelot, that survey showed, was popular. So they decided we won't even put all our eggs in Vasunda Raje's basket, who's been the traditional rival of Ashok Gelot. Instead, let's find another way out. Make this an election of Mr. Modi versus Gelot. Mr. Modi is an extremely popular leader in the Hindi heartland, especially in states like Rajasthan. In fact, let's be honest. The biggest takeaway one should have is the Modi factor. There is the Hindi heartland has a special affinity to Prime Minister Modi. He is seen by what I call as Moditva. This is a combination of Hindutva and the persona of Narendra Modi as a Vikas Purush. This idea has seeped in deep across the Hindi heartland. And this becomes the BJP's Brahmastra in elections. The double engine Sarkar may not work south of the Vindhyas as we saw in Karnataka in May. But in the northern states, it is a very powerful message that the BJP is able to send out. By contrast, the Congress in the Hindi heartland is organizationally weaker, doesn't have a clear ideology that it's able to push to people. Rahul Gandhi will take a stand against Hindutva, but the Congress will play soft Hindutva in both Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan. Rahul Gandhi will speak about pushing the caste census as uh, perhaps a, a game changer. But on the ground in states like Madhya Pradesh, the Congress doesn't have a strong OBC leadership to take forward that message. In the South, on the other hand, the Congress has been able to effect a generational change in a state like Telangana. Therefore, when anti-incumbency takes place, the fact that a Revan Reddy has consistently been speaking out against KCR's government, has gone to jail, is ready to take the fight to the streets, goes to the advantage of the Congress, building on the anti-incumbency in that state. The North-South divide, therefore, is very clear. Rahul Gandhi's Bharat Jodo Yatra went through Telangana and may have been one factor in creating a momentum. The same Yatra goes through a state like Rajasthan, but has no impact or limited impact because guess what? The Congress for five years has not been able to resolve a simple issue. Get Sachin Pilot and Ashok Gelot on the same page. You can't just one day before the election get the two of them holding hands and believe all is well. At the end of the day, it's my old theory. Jo jita wo sikandar. All that I've said about the BJP appears to suggest that 2024 is now a done deal. Let's be honest. It's going to take a bit of a miracle for the BJP to be bested by the Congress in a straight fight. And it is those 185 odd seats in the Lok Sabha that will make all the difference in the final analysis. The Congress needs a narrative. It needs ideological clarity. It needs a leadership that is actually able to connect with people on the ground. And it needs that organizational robustness. Does it have it? Five months, frankly, doesn't seem enough. I hesitate to say anything in politics is a done deal. Recall that in 2003, the BJP won some of, some of these sta very states, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh, but lost the 2004 elections. Will that happen again? All I can say is extremely unlikely. If the BJP is to be taken on, it has to be taken on only by a perfect match played by the opposition. 
the bjp has at the moment the machine the money power some would say the media power the opposition on the other hand is struggling to find an answer struggling to find a narrative which is why i would say after this election result barring a miracle advantage bharatiya janata party and narendra modi could then do what no prime minister has done since jawaharlal nehru win three consecutive lok sabha elections that was the straight path thanks for watching namaskar do subscribe do subscribe to my youtube channel for many more such videos for now stay well stay safe jai hind namaskar